One of Lenovo's best-selling business laptops is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Now in its 12th generation, the X1 gets a major facelift. New Meteor Lake processors and updated display panels. Is it enough to keep it ahead of the competition? Let's find out. <music> The X1 Carbon has several visual design changes in the Gen 12 models. Most noticeably, the webcam bar across the top of the display, housing a new 8 megapixel camera and detection sensors. Some people will either love it or hate it, acting as a grip to open the lid. A lot of design change is the speaker grills on the sides of the keyboard. These have been removed in favour of a slightly larger keyboard. The speakers have been relocated underneath the chassis. The bottom and top display bezels are now even thinner for a smaller footprint. The Lenovo engineers have shaved a lover 100 grams off the already light laptop, now starting at 1.09 kilograms or 2.4 pounds. The military standard 810H military tested Eclipse black color chassis consists of recycled aluminium bottom, magnesium and aerospace grade carbon fiber top. In layman terms, the keyboard deck is solid with no flexing. Same can be said for the well-protected display lid. The X1 chassis has the usual rubberized feel and texture. The anti-smudge coating does a fairly good job to keep fingerprints off the surface. The X1 Carbon Gen 12 has numerous recycled materials used in its chassis and packaging, giving it a very good green thumbs up. Here's a list of what has been used. Lenovo have kept it simple with opening the bottom cover. Four screws and pry open with a plastic tool. The memory is soldered on, so make sure you order the correct option at time of purchase. Up to 64GB low-power DDR5 6400MHz RAM. The WLAN card is soldered on. There's one M.2 2280 PCIe 4x4 slot to upgrade the storage. The 57 watt hour battery and WLAN card are removable too. This review model has a 14 inch WUXGA 1920x1200 60Hz IPS matte display panel. It has an 89.2% screen to body ratio on the 16x10 aspect ratio screen. Color accuracy is rated at 100% sRGB. Good enough for office productivity work, but not for professional photo or video workflows. The panel is iSafe certified 2.0 to aid in reducing eye strain when staring at the screen all day. Brightness is rated at a generous 500 nits, more than enough to work outdoors in a sunny area. Indoors, working at 50% brightness is plenty to work comfortably for long durations. As you would expect from a ThinkPad, the display lid opens the full 180 degrees flat. This model has the ThinkPad Privacy Guard, a feature that secures your data privacy by using angled light technology to reduce display visibility at side angles, similar to HP's SureView technology. Pressing Function and D keys enables or disables this function. In practice, the security filter doesn't work that well. From the side, you can still read the text on the screen even at 45 degrees. Luckily, if you don't need this security option, opt for one of the other display options available with the X1 Carbon, including a low-power 400 nits model or the OLED Color Acura 100% DCI P3 model. Here's a list of the other display options available. On the left, we have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A 5 gigabits per second, always on. Two USB-C Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, 40 gigabits per second, with USB Power Delivery 3.0 and DisplayPort 2.1, and an optional Nano SIM card tray. On the right we have a Kensington security slot, a HDMI 2.1 connector to 4K 60Hz, a USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 5 gigabits per second, a headphone microphone combo jack 3.5mm and the power button. Wireless connectivity is taken care of with the Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211, 802.11ax2x2 and Bluetooth 5.3 combo card. During testing, the Wi-Fi signal was reliable and strong with a Wi-Fi 6 access point. The Bluetooth connection was reliable to a mouse or external speaker during long periods. This review model has an optional Quectel EM160RGL 4G LTE CAT16 M.2 card with embedded eSIM functionality, giving mobile 4G connectivity for the on-the-go travelers. There is also a 5G WAN card option available too. One of the biggest changes in the Gen 20 12 is the ThinkPad keyboard. The left control key finally goes back to its rightful position in the corner. For stubborn diehards, you can software swap the control and function keys back. There's new markings on the keyboard for better accessibility, including the enter, 
function, insert, the volume up and down buttons, and the down arrow. The keyboard is naturally spill resistant with an air intake design and a new function keys layout. Customizable F12 key allows you to open a website, app, file, or folder. The print screen has been moved to the F9 key in its original place, a fingerprint reader. The F10 and F11 video conferencing keys have been dropped in favor of opening the Microsoft Snippet tool and phone link. During a touch typing test, I easily managed 75 words per minute, 100% accuracy on this fantastic keyboard. Most business users won't have any complaints using this keyboard for long hours. There's two level backlighting for working in dark environments. This model has a glass haptic touchpad that was first featured in the Z13 I reviewed back in 2022. Instead of relying on physical buttons, haptic touchpads simulate the sensation of a click using software controlled vibrations. The touchpad is slightly larger in the Gen 12 version. It has a smooth glide action with multi-touch support. There's a horizontal line dividing the integrated buttons for the track point nib. This can be turned on or off as it's part of the haptic touchpad. A double tap of the track point nib opens the ThinkPad track point quick menu to optimize audio visuals, change microphone and volume settings, change a battery threshold and even take notes with the dictation toolbar for handy speech to text transcription. If you prefer the traditional glass touchpad with track point dedicated buttons, there are X1 models with this feature. The two watt stereo speakers tuned by Adobe Atmos are located underneath the keyboard. Lenovo removed the two extra tweeter speakers from the previous model, leaving the audio quality as loud, with balanced highs, high mids, but lacking any bass. Sound is fine for video conferencing or playing BBC radio in the background while catching up with your work emails. If you need better audio quality, invest in a decent pair of Bluetooth headphones. Here are some audio samples. The webcam is a UHD 8 megapixel and IR discrete with privacy shutter, MIPI standard and uses computer vision technology. There's two far field microphone arrays supporting Adobe Voice. The webcam supports Windows Studio FX. This feature combines AI and modern processors through the MPU in the Intel Core Ultra processor, giving useful webcam features like automatic framing, eye contact and background blur effects. The webcam video quality is superb one of the best built-in webcams on a laptop. The Windows Studio FX works smoothly. For example, auto-framing locks in to center your face. The background blur works effectively too. This review model has an Intel Core Ultra 7 165U offering 12 cores, two of which are performance cores 1.7 gigahertz to 4.9 gigahertz and 10 efficient cores 1.2 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz, including two low power island cores 700 megahertz to 2.1 gigahertz. The 165U has 14 threads, Processor base power is 15 watts up to a maximum turbo power of 57 watts. Minimum assured power is rated at 12 watts. The integrated Intel AI Boost MPU with two Gen 3 engines for hardware AI workload acceleration has a maximum frequency of 1.4 GHz, along with 16 GB soldered LP DDR5 6400 MHz memory and a stick of 512 GB SSD M.2 2280 PCIe 4x4 Performance NVMe OPA 2.0 storage. The X1 will comfortably run your typical business workloads, opening multiple browser tabs, checking emails on Outlook, running Spotify in the background and a few video meetings. Tip, if you need better performance, go with the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H 16-core processor model, which also has a faster 8-core ARC graphics. For a performance test, we set the best performance mode in Windows and plug the laptop into the mains during testing. Here are the benchmarking results for the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12. 3D Mark Time Spy results came in with an overall score of 2,267, CPU score of 7,031, and a graphics score of 2,025. 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme overall came in at 1,057, graphics score of 943, and CPU score of 3,404. 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra results came in with an overall score of 1,233, graphics score of 1,147, physics score of 19,405, and a combined score of 671. 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme results came in with an overall score of 2,000. 549, graphics score of 2,533, physics score of 19,324, and a combined score of 1,132. 
3D Mark Port Royal score came in at 828. 3D Mark Steel Nomad had a score of 340 and a graphics test score of 3.41 frames per second. 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite had a score of 1426 and a graphics test score of 10.56 frames per second. Cinebench 2024 testing produced a score in multi core 532 and 96 in single core. PC Mark 10 had an overall score of 5807. PC Mark 10 Extended had an overall score of 5604. Superposition resulted in a score 3162. Geekbench 6.3 CPU benchmark resulted in a single core score of 2281 and 9462 in multi-core. The GPU compute benchmark results came in with a score of 17578. Blender 4.1 benchmark had a score of 126.52 for the 165U. For the Intel graphics, the Blender score was 233.25. Here's a comparison with the HP EliteBook 840G10. Using the quick CPU tool plugged in balance mode idle, CPU temperature is around 51 Celsius. CPU clock speed is around 1.1 GHz on the E cores and 1.33 GHz on the P cores and around 4 watts CPU power. The fan stays silent. With video playback balance mode, the Ultra 7 165U doesn't break a sweat at 54 Celsius on average, 1.5 to 2 GHz on the E cores and 2 to 3 GHz on the P cores. CPU power is on average 8 watts. The dual fans kick in at 41.2 decibels and the temperature at the top vents is 38 celsius and 43 celsius at the center of the keyboard. Under best performance mode on mains running 3D Mark 10 Time Spy, temperatures hit 41 celsius by the top vents and 44 celsius at the center of the keyboard deck. 44.6 decibels with the dual fans constantly spinning. CPU temperature is 100 celsius. E calls are around 4.63 gigahertz. E calls around 2.93 gigahertz and CPU power is around 31.35 watts. Set to high performance plugged in running Blender benchmarking, the CPU fluctuates between 2.5 GHz E cores to 3.5 GHz P cores. CPU temperature is around 100 Celsius and CPU power is constant at 32 watts. The fans do kick faster and louder up to 47 decibels. Temperatures around the top vents are 40 Celsius and 44 Celsius at the center of the keyboard. In battery mode, balance mode, video playback, the CPU power is 5 watts on average. Clock speed is 1 to 1.3 GHz on the E cores and 1.1 GHz on the P cores. CPU temperature of 49 Celsius. The fans spin up at 46 decibels constantly and chassis temperatures hit 42 Celsius at most at the center of the keyboard. Same can be said with running the Blender benchmarking under battery mode best performance. CPU power hits 33 watts, 2.55 GHz on E cores and 3.34 GHz clock speed on the P cores and CPU temperature of 101 Celsius. The dual fans do spin up fast with fan noise around 45 decibels at most and temperatures down to 43 Celsius when running heavy workflows. Here's a list of the target audience for the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 business power users, marketing execs, content developers, project managers. The Intel graphics offers four XE cores running at a graphics max dynamic frequency of 2 GHz boost based on the XE LPG architecture. Intel doesn't promote this slower iGPU as part of the Arc family. Its more powerful sibling with 8 cores can be found in the H Meteor Lake CPUs. Its nearest rival is the Nvidia T500, but it's far behind the AMD Radeon iGPUs like the 680M or the newer 760M. The Arc 4 GPU will struggle with demanding games like Cyberpunk 2027, even in low settings, sometimes crashing even in the default graphics settings. Stick to the occasional game with older or less demanding titles. Here are some gaming samples.
Lenovo have included some useful security features in the X1 Carbon, a discrete TPM 2.0 security encryption chip, a fingerprint reader on a keyboard key, a Kensington Nano security slot to stop people taking off with the laptop, there's an IR camera for Windows Hello facial recognition, a webcam privacy shutter to shut out prying eyes, talking of webcam, Lenovo have a computer vision based user presence sensoring including lock on lead. Lastly, there's a privacy guard to block people viewing your screen from a side view with a press of two keys. Inside is an integrated 57 watt hour battery. On balance mode, 40% brightness with constant office apps running, aka PC Mark 10 testing. We managed under 4.5 hours of battery life. On balance mode, 40% brightness video playback managed just under 6 hours of battery life. Under heavy load or running taxing applications, expect 2 to 2.5 hours battery life. The X1 comes with a 65 watt USB-C slim power adapter. It takes around 2 hours to fully charge the X1 from MT. The good, the bad and the really bad. Polished design. With each generation, the Nova have tweaked a solid, thin and lightweight chassis, shaved off a few grams, making it easier to hold with one hand, tank-like built quality and thinner display bezels. Good inputs. The keyboard is still one of the best around, improvements for the visually impaired user, tweaks to some of the shortcut function keys making it more useful, a new haptic touchpad giving smooth and accurate feedback, just wish it was slightly larger, wicked webcam. The 2160p UHD webcam combined with the MPU processor gives exceptional sharp video quality and smooth virtual meetings with your colleagues. The extra megapixels provide crisp detail even in low lighting conditions. Decent ports. For an Ultrabook, the X1 Carbon comes with two USB Type-A ports, two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, HDMI and headphone microphone combo jack. Generous port selection compared to the competition. Purring audio. In low volume from day one, there's a purring noise coming from the speakers. Even with the audio driver reinstalled and tweaks with the audio enhancements, the purring noise still exists. A lover user reported the same issue on Reddit. Hopefully it's not a quality issue. Finicky fans. As soon as you set the X1 to best performance mode on mains power, the dual fans kicking constantly in at a low humming noise while idle, and at the centre of the keyboard gets lukewarm to the touch. Pitiful battery life. The privacy guard display consumes more power than its 1080p counterpart, resulting in poor battery life in the X1. For example, a power user using the X1 constantly expect to plug it into the mains at least once, if not twice, over a 10-hour day. Enterprise expensive. The X1 Carbon starts at £1,500, but this review model begins at over £2,000 before taxes, up to $2,245 or $2,858 for the top spec model. Most large enterprises will be the primary customers for the X1, but for individuals or small businesses, this will be out of reach when there are better value options available. What privacy? The privacy guard filter does not affect the picture quality or brightness as much as HP's competing Shoreview technology. However, when you switch it up using function and D keys, a blue tint appears and brightness is reduced to 90 nits. However, this makes it impractical to use for the laptop user. Increased brightness past 60 or 70% and the privacy guard becomes useless. Stay away from the privacy guard model unless you desperately require it. If you were in the market for a premium 14-inch business laptop, what other laptops would you be looking at? In no particular order, here's some to consider. HP EliteBook 840G11, Dell Latitude 7440, Asus ExpertBook V9 OLED B9403, Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Gen 5, Huawei MateBook X Pro 2024, Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2, MSI Prestige 14 AI Evo C1M, Acer Travelmate P614, Asus ZenBook 14 OLED UM3406. The Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 has a newly designed case but with small incremental changes, similar to an Apple iPhone launch nowadays. It retains a tank-like build in a slim, lightweight chassis and still manages to fit a 14-inch screen, brilliant keyboard and plenty of ports. Although the new Meteor Lake 165U processor easily offers enough performance for everyday office work, with its two performance cores, the current models are barely competitive and the U-series chips only feature the slower iGPU with four XE cores. Strange choice from Lenovo when it's an ultra-premium business laptop. The range should stick with the stronger performing Core Ultra 7 155H, 165H or 185H processors with the added benefit of the Intel R8 core graphics. Unfortunately, Battery life is subpar, no thanks to the poorly executed privacy guard display panel and small battery inside. For Gen 10 or 11 owners, there's not enough to make the jump. 
If you wait a few months when prices drop to a realistic price tag, go for the OLED Core Ultra 155H model if you want one of the best business ultra books on the market. What do you guys think? Leave your comments and discuss below. Hope you guys enjoyed the review of the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 laptop. Please click on the like button if you enjoyed this review video and subscribe if you would like to watch more of our tech videos. Thanks for watching. Cheers.